From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Oh my, so much is happening in this world that just points to good things and bad things. But of course, the good thing that we talked about last week was the rapture. When the Lord comes and says, come up hither. And all the Christians go up to be with him. And of course, that is when we hear him say either, well done, good and faithful servant, or not receive a reward. But how good it is to know that he's gone to prepare a place for us. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, he said, that where I am, there ye may be also. Well, the rapture is something wonderful. Jack, thank you for speaking about it so often. Well, Rex, tell him we have to because you cannot have the second coming of Christ without the rapture. They're together. And in theological centers, we call them the rapture and the revelation. The rapture is when we go up. The revelation is his revealing on earth when he comes back with the crowd he took before. Now, let's define the rapture, all right? The Bible says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, be dead. That's the word for dead, sleep, because you're going to live forever. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 11 hundredths of a second, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we, the living, shall be changed. For this corruptible shall be caught to meet the Lord near. And then shall we who are alive be transformed and changed and go up with them. Wow. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, how can we ever be with the Lord up there? Because that is heaven where he is. But wait a minute. When you read Matthew 24, verse 18, it talks about this rapture. And then it says the next thing on the event is the glorious coming of Christ when he comes back to set the kingdom of heaven upon earth. Heaven's going to be moved from space down the earth. Yeah. Wow. And I'm going to be proving all that in this program, but I'm going to say something. I said last week I would talk about God's love for the Jew, and I'm going to really get into it. And all you Palestinians and others who hate the Jew, you better get in your Bibles and get right with God, lest you miss heaven. Because God loves the Jew. Are you listening? Listen to what God says. Israel, I have not chosen you because you are more in people than any other. You were the fewest. But I chose you because I loved you. And I'm going to show you that whole thing in a few moments. Oh, Jack, you've made it very, very clear that the Lord loves Israel. He loves the Jewish people. And yet uh, we've talked about uh, something that uh, seems like, uh, does he really love them? But we're going to show how ultimately he raises the Jews up and brings them to be his chosen people. And um, my own mind. They'll be ruling the world. They will. Well, the first message that I ever heard Jack preach was the coming war with Russia. And I'm going to be referring to Russia in just a few moments. Uh, that war doesn't take place in the United States, by the way, it takes place over in Israel. But uh, before we get to Russia, let's find out what's going on right now. In Israel, take a look, please, the Wall Street Journal. The Iran-Israel war is here. More than a decade of civil strife has opened up the region for the escalating state-to-state -state conflict. Well, the Iran Navy chief, Zionist presence in Persian Gulf may trigger the war. Well, you know, Iran's talking about the war also. Netanyahu, if necessary, we will begin a war in Gaza. 
They're saying that that land belongs to us. You're not going to take it away. Going on, Abbas will enter Jerusalem as millions of fighters. Now the Palestinians are talking. You're not going to take Gaza from us. We're going to keep it. Going on, we will bring hundreds of rockets on Israel in a single barrage. Well, that's Hamas speaking there. And point the weapons at the Zionist enemy. That's the Palestinians talking. And again, Israel widens military campaign against Iran. I'm going to stop here for a moment. Do you see what's going on right now in the Middle East? Iran and the Palestinians. By the way, how can the Palestinians go against Israel? They say they're Christians. Oh, Rexel, I've been in God's work for 78 years. I've preached in every denomination, every Protestant denomination. I've spoken to the Catholics. I've spoken to everybody imaginable. And I'm sorry that there's so many Christians who are totally ignorant of this holy book because they don't study it and they don't listen when it's being preached. And that Palestinians are the worst crowd. Oh, we're saved. We love Jesus. But you hate the book? No, we don't. Yes, you do. Well, how is that possible? Because the Jew wrote this entire book. It is not the King James Version. It is not the Doyen Version of the Catholic Church. It is the Jewish Version, cover to cover. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Who are these holy men? All the Old Testament's Jewish. The New Testament, only one guy, a Gentile, Luke, wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts. 66 books and 64 written by Jews because God loves the Jews and you don't. And you better get a good salvation experience and do what you're supposed to do. You know, there was a guy persecuting Christians. His name was Saul of Tarsus, became the Apostle Paul. And he fell so much in love with the Jewish people because of his race. And he's a New Testament writer. And he said this in Romans 9. I say the truth in Christ. I align not. My conscience bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. I could wish myself accursed, accursed from Christ for my Jewish people if they could only get to know the truth. Even he was muddled at that time. But he said in verse 10, they're in darkness now. But Paul said, hallelujah, the greater day is coming in Romans 11. All Israel shall be saved. And that's when the 144,000 Jews from the 12 tribes of Israel, 12,000 times 12, 144,000, go to the whole world preaching the gospel of the kingdom, preaching Jesus saves. They have come out of their darkness. And all Israel gets saved. All Israel says, we want Jesus. And brother, the greatest revival in the world happens. And all these crowds that hated the Jew are converted. And when God sets up the kingdom of heaven on earth, as we're going to see in this conclusion, he says, there's only one place I'm choosing to set up heaven above on earth beneath. Jerusalem! Forever. The capital of the world. The center of Christianity. And some of you Jewish people, if you start listening to my program, will understand it. And you'll give your heart to Jesus because he's getting ready to get all of you into the family of God. Well, Jack, before we go on with the war and with what happens, who joins with Israel? Who's against Israel and uh, joins with Iran? We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But you know where it's all at, right here. It's our wonderful offer of the week. And Jack says he's memorized, he's memorized the Bible. It's been New times. Yes, absolutely, Jack. And like I said, the coming war with Russia is the first message I ever heard him give. So you want to get this offer of the week. Here's our promo. So take a look at it, please. 
Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopy Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopy Ministries. Dr. Vanopy has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopy Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopy used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanopy, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Oh, friends, don't put off making the call or writing us because, like I said last week, it's not a forever offer. We're probably going to be winding it up pretty soon. It's so important that you have this because, like I said, Jack has several books in here helping to explain uh, many of the books of the Bible. Now, I just want to say that something bad is going to be happening over there and it is found in the Word of God, Ezekiel 38 and so forth. But I'm going to quickly go through and bring Russia in now in just a moment. But this first one, who's going to join with Israel? Who's going to join with her? U.S. and Israel are attacking Iranian targets in Iraq. They're joining together in some of the projects already. Well, Russian President Putin vows symmetric response to U.S. missile test. Going on, U.S.-Russia nuke tensions may be even worse than Iran threat. Now, you know what? There we are, and we're against what Russia's doing. And boy, they're threatening us, aren't they? Going on. Well, Putin's Chernobyl, a mysterious explosion may be the evidence of a new nuclear missile. They probably have it, friends. I'm quite sure they do. Here comes another country on the side of Russia and Iran. China vows closer ties to Russia. We've talked about that before. China-Russia joint exercise sends a message to Washington. Okay, there they are, the two of them, warning us. <laughs> oh, the Bible is so up to date. And also China eyes I take army and says, U.S. undermines global stability. Boy, are they being critical of the United States. And then, again, let's go on. Russia to resume S-400 delivery to Turkey. Tagarma. All right, there's Tagarma. They're joining with Russia also. Erdogan, whoever is on Israel's side, we are against them. Now, you can tell where they're going, can't you? They're going to be on the side of Russia and China. Well, you know, Jack, it's wonderful that the United States is on the side of God's chosen people, yeah. right? Right. I'm so happy about that. But here's a lineup now. Russia, or Iran, Russia, China, Turkey, all coming down on Israel. Well, that's the message I preached in 800 churches then I preached it in 235 citywide crusades, the 40 million people and 10 million got saved. Then I went around the world and preached it in 50 nations and it went something like this. The coming war with Russia. The first, it starts with Russia and China coming together to form the largest armies in the history. Russia is found under the terms Gog of Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And China is part of the kings of the East as they come out of all those countries in the East. And that is not only China, it's Japan. And of course, that includes uh, North Korea and South Korea. Then they had all the other groups coming in. Now, Iran is mentioned in the papers now. And that is because Iran heads up the Muslim movement. And believe it or not, there are 57 nations in the world right now in other parts of the world, all Muslims. And who's the boss? Iran. So you got millions there. We can go on. Tagarma is Turkey, and they joined with Iran. 
There's so many names there. Gomer, Gomerland, Gomer is Germany. And they join in the war with Russia. And there's just no end to this. And it's the bloodiest conflict in history. Atom bombs. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 6, 6, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 20, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the trees was burned, all green grass was burned. An atomic war that destroys millions of people. When that thing is over, it takes seven months to bury the dead and scores of months to clean up all the mess of those that have fallen. And just among the Muslims, 200 million are buried. It takes seven months to put them in all the ground. When I preach this around the world, millions came to Christ. Now listen to me carefully, folks. Where does the U.S. stand as the friend of Israel? Love the Jews. We gave many of our troops there. They gave their life for the Jewish people because they love them. And I'm going to tell you something. Not only does God love the Jews, but I love the Jews with all my heart. And I'm a Belgian American. Now, why do I love the Jews? Because they've got a God who loves them. He says, now get this, he makes it as a love story. He says, Israel is the apple of my eye. Israel is my betrothed, my fiance. Israel is my wife. Israel, I'm going to give you an everlasting name, and that name is Israel, and you're going to have it forever, and no one's going to destroy you. That's God Almighty speaking. I don't care what Allah or Muhammad says, or Buddha. I care what God says. The Lord Jesus said, salvation is of the Jews. No other way. Why? Because Jesus came forth from a Jewish virgin. Yes. God says, I'm going to pick someone. And the one I love the most is Israel. And the Holy Spirit is going to create a miracle in the Virgin Mary's womb, a Jewess. She says, how, this be? how will this be? I don't know a man. God says, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Amen. Creation. And that holy thing which will be born of you, Mary, shall be called the Son of God. Oh, does the Holy Spirit love the Jew? Yeah, the Holy Spirit wrote this book, 66 books, and he chose 64 Jews. Everything from Genesis the revelation is from Jews, except Luke and the book named after him and the book of Acts. How are you going to argue with that? Now this great war has come. Millions are dead. The last day of that war sees the battle of Armageddon being fought just last for the day. The armistice is signed. But Jesus is in heaven doing something. He said, look, I've been working on this vehicle to get us back. The rapture has happened. All you believers are here. Now we got to get back for the second coming to earth. That's what the second coming is. We got it all mixed up. He said, look, I've created this thing. It's taken me 2,000 years. It is 1,500 miles long and wide and high. 1,500 miles up into the air. You say, oh, how can that be? Because the third heaven is 187 billion trillions of miles. God put up a big world when he made it. Yes, universe. Uh, All right. Uh -huh. So this thing is made. Right. And guess what it says on it? This is from the book of Revelation. It says, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, not Rome, not America, New York or anywhere else. Israel. Would you say, God, I'm going to give Israel an everlasting name. I love him. And that name is on that ship. And he says to all the millions, probably a few million leaders there. That's why I'm talking about the millions of souls in this great crusade for Christ. 
And he says, on board, on board. It's so big the old are able to do it. It comes down to earth. And you know where it settles? Right over the city of Jerusalem forever and forever and forever. The first thing that happens is 144,000 Jews who've been converted and won to Jesus say, now we're going to go to the whole world as missionaries. What? Yeah. And they preach the gospel to all the people. That's what this book says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. They've got the light now. Paul had said, oh, if only to be saved, I'd give my life. I'd, I'd be willing to be a curse from Christ. But it's now happened. He says, it's happened. They're here. And they also have all the believers with them that came down from heaven. And they go to every single person on the earth. It's the greatest revival in history. Millions saved. And let me tell you this right now. Israel is going to become the center of the world, the capital of all the nations on earth. And in that city is going to be the heaven above has been transferred to earth beneath. That's where he puts it, Israel. That's love. Oh, what a time it's going to be. Now, the judgment day has just occurred. And these people have been waiting, like I said, in Sheol, Old Testament, and Hades in the New Testament. It was a place where they had two compartments, the suffering side and the comfort side. They were all waiting on the comfort side, but now the side that's painful and uncomfortable is moved. Billions and billions. Remember what the rich man said? Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm tormented in this flame. But that's not all of it. That's just the beginning. In that place, the believers are taken out as they did at the rapture. But now the lost are transferred to Gehenna, the final penitentiary of souls. Now Gehenna is the place we call the lake of fire forever and forever and forever. It'll never end. And they're there and they'll never get out. Why? They rejected Jesus. <clears throat> God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Do you know when that ship comes down and they get off, Jesus says, hey, on you, the second death has no power. You're going to live forever. For now, the everlasting life you've been promised begins here and now. Wow. But I got real good news for you. If Jesus comes tonight and you and I go home alive, the dead, of course, are revived. But if we go home tonight as living believers, we will not die the first or the second time. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes. I'm looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing because I'll never die. And he's coming soon. The Holy Spirit's been with me now for two years, usually four in the morning. And I spent two hours in prayer. And he keeps saying, preach the imminent return of Christ. It happens soon. Jack, don't miss it looking for that blessed hope. And I have. He says, because when it happens, the kingdom of heaven is set up on earth. It's moved from there to earth. That's what it's all about. Read Matthew 24. And iniquity shall abound the love of one he shall wax gold with all the sins. But what happens? And then they'll preach the gospel of the kingdom. And that's the kingdom come to earth. It's happening going to happen any day now, folks. And I beg you to think about your salvation. Get ready for the greatest event in history. Oh, I love it, Rex. Yes, Jackie, you know, the rapture is going to happen very, very soon, where Jesus has come up hither. You know, either you'll be left behind for the horrible things on earth, 
or you be taken to be with him. Receive your reward. How wonderful it is to know that you can be ready. You can be forgiven. You can be uh, your things that you've done that you wish you hadn't done will be blotted out. Will you accept Jesus right now as your Savior? Jack's going to pray that wonderful prayer of accepting Christ into your heart right now, ready for heaven in the rapture, and then coming back with him seven years later. Jack, will you pray the prayer? The book of Revelation says, the fearful and unbelieving and abominable on whoremongers and murderers and sorcerers, drug addicts, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth forever and forever and forever. And the Christians will be living in that city. There won't be one unsafe person there. Everyone will believe her. What an hour it's going to be. Yes, amen. Oh, and you can be there. Pray this prayer. Jesus, you're the only way. 804 times the Bible says you're the only way. And you said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman can come to the Father but by me. And Jesus, I believe that now. That's why you shed that blood. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission to sins. And as it flowed from your face, as they plurked your beard, and as they put nails in your hands and the feet and beat you with the cat of nine tails, you stood there as a bloody mess. But that blood dripping said, you can be forgiven. I shed it for you. Lord Jesus, I accept what you did. Come into my heart now. In your holy name, amen. Amen. Did you accept the Lord as your Savior? I want to send you something that is really, really good. First steps in a new direction. The Lord wants to walk with you every day of your life before he comes. Our mailing address is Jack Benjamin Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Wonderful offer. I don't miss it. It's a Jack Benjamin Prophecy Bible. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order the Jack Van Epi Prophecy Bible. And oh my, what a treasure. Have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day, 1 800 JBI 7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Epi Ministries, Box 7004. Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Empey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. Now here's Rex Ella. Thank you, Chuck. Make the order right away. Call or write to us. You need to have the Bible. I want to leave you with this thought. There's never a day when you don't need to Pray. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.